So, I mean, this is really what critical social justice looks like in action. It's also often clumsily referred to as wokeness. So this is just this idea that we have all of these different identities and they have different relationships to power. And it, it really is very reductive, right? Because what it does is it makes an assumption that just because you check a box, whether it's that, if, you know, if you are a Christian and you are a male and you um, are a straight person, male then you have all of this power and then it teaches that you know if you are a woman you somehow are powerless or you fall into this oppressed bucket um and it just um unfortunately this is largely what ethnic studies is based on and because california requires ethnic studies as a course now to graduate we're seeing tons of this across the state of California, but that's not the only place that we're seeing it for sure. Boston Public Schools also has an ethnic studies requirement. And then we see lessons like this appearing in classrooms, um, not in an ethnic studies context, but just because, again, this critical social justice has really made its way into a lot of different disciplines, sometimes because the school wants it and sometimes because the teacher is doing that on their own. Um, as far as the reaction, um, certainly this is very upsetting to a lot of parents, but as far as I'm aware, I've heard no reaction yet from the school district um, about, you know, this lesson, um, other than I've, I've, I've heard people say, well, it's an optional resource, and that's often true, right? The teacher may or may not choose to use the resource, but the fact that this resource even exists for any student, let alone middle schoolers, is obviously alarming. Um, and so, and it's not optional for the kids. If the teacher decides I'm going to use this, then this is what they're doing, you know, spending their day doing, um, which I think is quite damaging.